What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today is day four of the fourth annual 10 Days of Pumpkin here on the channel, and the beer I'm reviewing today comes from the Abomination Brewing Company, and they are a nomadic brewery that brews out of the 12% Beer Project location in North Haven, Connecticut, and this is their Forbidden Pumpkin. So they are calling this one an Imperial Milkshake Style IPA that is brewed with pumpkin, spices, vanilla, and lactose. It comes in at 9.3% alcohol by volume, no IBUs less than time of review. This can is approximately six weeks old. So Abomination, I have never had a beer from them, period. I've never reviewed one, never had one. I've heard pretty good things about them. Uh, they're wandering into the Fog series of beers. I think they have like a base beer of that. It's a double IPA, and then they do like hop-specific ones. I've seen Galaxy and Citra. A lot of people seem to enjoy that series, uh, so I might have to grab some uh, within the series whenever they get released and uh, review them because, again, heard great things uh, about that series. But I've also heard really good things about this beer specifically. Here's the thing for me. When it comes to uh, milkshake IPAs or double IPAs or imperial milkshake-style IPAs, uh, they're hit or miss for me. Some are really delicious that I've had, and some have been disgusting. Uh, last year, one of the beers I reviewed for the 10 Days of Pumpkin was Wendy from uh, the Central Waters Brewing Company. It was a coffee milkshake IPA, and it was one of the worst pumpkin beers I've had in the last couple years. It was disgusting. The, the coffee just did not mix well with the uh, base milkshake IPA, and then you added in the pumpkin and all that stuff. It just didn't work for me. So when I saw this one, I remember a couple people last year saying it was really good, and I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a go. Now, they say spices... Pumpkin spices are typically cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, clove, and ginger. Sometimes there is uh, allspice thrown in there. Uh, so I don't know if they're brewing them with you know, typical pumpkin spices, just a couple of them or whatnot. Uh, I do know this is double dry hop with citron mosaic. Again, this is an imperial milkshake style IPA. So I'm just curious how this is going to work. Like I said, some people have said this is really good, and I'm curious to give it a go, and we're going to. So here we go. You got you know you got your pumpkins, you got your spices, you got lactose, you got vanilla, then you got citron mosaic. It's 9.3 percent. It's looking like you know a regular imperial New England style IPA. Honestly, that's what it looks like right now. Okay, so we're gonna do that. I really like the artwork on this too. Uh, I don't know how it's gonna come off on camera, but I really do dig that artwork. I think it's pretty solid. I just I just you know, and Abomination's known kind of for their artwork, too. Um, anyway, I smell it, and it smells pretty interesting. Anyway, pours out like a uh, a typical hazy, darker, though. Looks like kind of like a slight oxidized uh, hazy. Maybe it's from the pumpkin in there. Who knows? Uh, so, yeah, like this really deep orange color. Uh, very murky, very hazy, turbid. About a half finger of this cream-colored head. I would say cream-colored, off-white, something like that. It looks really awesome. Like, it's going to stick around and have some great uh, glass lacing. Yeah, looks fantastic. Let's get a nose on it. Okay, <laughs> it smells interesting. Wow, so when I first smelled it, it just smelled like a really intense hazy. Uh, I got a lot of like peach and like sweeter citrus tones from the Citroen Mosaic. But then I went back for that second sniff and I got hit in the nose big time with pumpkin spices and vanilla, almost like, almost like a pumpkin pie, right? Like you get the pumpkin pie spices, the sweetness from the lactose and the vanilla, uh, so it's kind of like a pumpkin pie over top of a hazy base. And now I'm getting a little bit of graham cracker. Huh, this is a fucking crazy nose. This is weird how it's changing each sniff. Like I go back and it's something completely different. Yeah, so now it's kind of intertwining where it, there's a definite like pumpkin pie aspect to the beer. The pumpkin pie filling, the spices from that, a little bit of like a graham cracker crust, not big. Uh, that that do dollop of uh, whipped cream on top from the vanilla and the lactose, a sweeter vibe to it. But underneath that is still that hazy. I'm still getting the peach. I'm still getting the sweeter citrus tones. There's almost like a slight dank, almost herbaceous quality to it. It's tough to do for me nowadays in this day and age with how many breweries are out there, how many crazy fucking styles and crazy ingredients and how these breweries are just putting out these insane beers that it's hard to get a unique beer nowadays. And I mentioned this before on my channel, like when I get something that's unique, whether it's in the aroma or the taste, I always am happy because it's tough to do nowadays. This is kind of weird to me. There's not a lot of pumpkin milkshake IPAs out there. I know the Tired Hands does one, obviously the one I mentioned earlier, Wendy from Central Waters. I'm sure there's others but I have never had just a straight pumpkin milkshake IPA, and this is new to me, and it smells pretty fucking good. It's making my mouth water. I want to get into it, so let's see what this one has to offer. Cheers, everyone.
That's delicious. That is fucking really cool. Holy shit. I don't even know how to explain this. Oh, this is really good. Wow. So the, the first thing I'll say, the cool thing about this beer is that a lot of times when you brew a base beer like this, the pumpkin, the spices, the vanilla, and the lactose can just dominate a beer like this. You'll be like, okay, it tastes like pumpkin pie. Where the fuck is the, the milkshake IPA? Where's the IPA, right? Like you, you get everything in here. And it comes together in a cohesiveness that actually works extremely well for my palate. So we'll first go body and mouthfeel. Body this at 9.3%. It's not like thick and luscious, but it's like higher side of medium, like medium to higher side of medium. So it has enough of an intensity to the body to say, hey, this is a bigger beer. It's 9.3%. Probably drinks like a 7.5%, 8% beer from the body. The mouthfeel. It has carbonation, but like so many of these new age, New England style IPAs and milkshake IPAs, it's soft, it's smooth, it's creamy. The creamy aspect is dialed up a little bit on this because of the lactose. So they're probably using, you know, flaked oats and wheat and everything, but that bump, th th that addition of lactose is bumping up that mouthfeel from a creaminess aspect. The taste though, right at the forefront, it's weird because I get a melange of the pumpkin spice aspect of this beer. So I get like this nice, almost like brown sugar kind of sweetness that you'd get from like a, a pumpkin pie mixed in with those spices. I'm getting like a little bit of clove, a touch of like cinnamon and nutmeg. And that's right at the forefront. A lot of times I get those 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 spice notes on the back of the palate. That's right at the forefront. So it almost feels like it's real malty at the beginning, even though it, it doesn't really necessarily, I mean, I'm sure the malt's carrying some, you know, the sugars and whatnot. But what I'm saying is that I don't feel like this is a malt forward beer. It just has the uh, aspect that you, makes you think that it's malt forward. But so yeah, pumpkin pie like filling at the front of the palate. It passes through halfway through. I'm hit with vanilla, and it so it's like you get pumpkin pie filling. Then here's the dollop of whipped cream middle of the palate, and you're like, okay, this is definitely a pumpkin beer. But the second half of the palate for me changes, and I start getting this nice like moderate bitterness, like a zest, like a pithy zesty citrus uh, kind of bitterness. I'm underlying like stone fruits, more of like a peach or an apricot. There's almost this earthy, dank kind of quality. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I uh, had a phone call. Had to cut it short real quick and come back. Um, so I don't remember where I was, but I think I was on like the second half of the palette. So there's this like underlying like dank, uh, herbaceous, earthy kind of quality to the base milkshake IPA portion. That's really cool. So it's cohesive because I like the transition from the pumpkin pie with vanilla into the IPA portion of the show. There's a little bit of an alcohol stringency on the back of the palate, very minute, but lets me know, hey, it's a bigger beer. This is just, this is a fun fucking beer. That's what this is. I've never really had a pumpkin beer that has that kind of transition and cohesiveness from like the pumpkin, you know, pumpkin spices, pumpkin pie aspect into what the base beer is supposed to be, especially when it's a milkshake IPA or Imperial milkshake IPA. Uh, this is a really fun one. Uh, if you've never had this and you've seen it or you've never had a milkshake, Imperial pumpkin milkshake IPA, I would say grab this one if you see it around. Even at the time uh, that you see this video, I think the canning date should be like two months old. It's drinking fine right now at six weeks. It's really good. I'm pour the rest in here and we'll talk about um, rating. So Forbidden Pumpkin from Abomination. I think I am going to uh, bump this up a little bit because of the uniqueness, the fact that they made it work. Uh, everything about this beer is really fun. So I'll give this beer without question a low 4.5 out of 5. I'm going to 4.4 out of 5. Really fucking good beer. Uh, I would not be surprised if this is the best of the bunch from this year. It's just super fucking tasty. So if you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. Like I said, some of you have had this one. You mentioned it to me, and I'm glad I picked it up. Uh, price and availability. Price point on this one, I think, was like just over $5 a can. It was like $5.29 a can. So let's say if you buy a four-pack, probably $20 a four-pack. That's appropriate. It's 9.3%. 
It's an Imperial IPA and it has pumpkin, spices, vanilla, lactose, like five bucks a can is kind of the going right nowadays. Uh, whether you agree with it or not, that's kind of the price point and I think it's fair for everything else that's on the market and availability, I have no idea. Abomination, like I said, they're a nomadic brewery. Uh, they brew out a 12% uh, beer project. Uh, so they get a lot of good distribution. So if you get Abomination stuff in your neck of the woods, you should see this one at some point. So yeah. Not much more to say about it. Day four in the books for the 10 Days of Pumpkin, the 2021 edition. Uh, like I said, this might be the best pumpkin beer of this year. I wouldn't be surprised. It's damn tasty. And uh, yeah, not much more to say about it. So appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Check back tomorrow for day five of the 10 Days of Pumpkin. And until then, cheers.